See, I've been doing a lot of the wearable weight stuff with John Cronin in Auckland, University of Auckland. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, and I'm going to talk about that at TFC. Um, I've been doing the, the blood flow restriction stuff with go be strong or be strong. That's been some crazy stuff. Um, it's not what I thought it was going to be. It's a lot harder than you think. Uh, yeah, that, those are the two things that I've been working on. You know, I'm basically compiling data for my for TFC uh, in my presentation on microdosing. And so once I start putting these things together, I start reading a lot of research and, you know, you go down different wormholes to get information. Uh, so a lot of inter versus intra muscle working, uh, external, internal recruitment patterns, uh, and kind of where we've been missing the boat in training and why there's not a lot of transfer training when we train. Um, yeah, so I'm going to, that's all going to come out at TFC in a, in a month here. Cool. What so, is, what is micro, what does microdosing mean in your, in your world? So like we use grams instead of pounds to train, uh, 200 to 400 grams. Um, and with the, the occlusion stuff, you know, I'm working out with five pound dumbbells and I'm getting wrecked to the point where I'm sore for like a week. Mm. Um, been, I stupidly go all out first time and then I wreck my body just to see what gets wrecked. <laughs> and so I know what, what the impact is instead of slowly taking my time. So... <laughs> I learned the hard way on both of those things that just because it says 200 grams and you can flick it around like a candy bar doesn't mean that it can't have a huge impact on, on what your body does, which is the difference between internal and external recruitment patterns. Um, so James, uh, James Heron asked, uh, um, where, where would you start with occlusion exercise? Like ex what exercises would you start with? Like what kind of, what kind of loads would you start with? Um, where, what's square one with that? So square one is you got to get good equipment. There's, and I think there's a big difference because you need some blood flow. And I think if you do what some people do on the internet, where they just strap down their arm and leg, you've stopped blood flow. Um, and what the be strong stuff does is really smart and they've got all of the Doppler research to go with it, which is seeing how much blood flow there is. It still allows for some blood flow, which is really important, um, especially if you're gonna do their kind of workouts. Um, and so from there, um, you just move. So what, I start off with five pound dumbbells doing bicep and tricep extensions, just because my elbows are trash from resetting so many people. Um, and so I can't do arm work, which accounts for the fact that my arms look like spaghetti noodles. Um, um, so it, it, it allows for some blood flow, but it stops some, which means it does stop some metabolites and, and things like that. And what I found was that you go 30 seconds on 30 seconds off and you're just pumping it out. And I went back and forth extension and tries extension and, and, and curl. Uh, and I did it for seven minutes or eight minutes. You never go more longer than 20 minutes with the occlusion things on. And I found out that reason why too, it, you know, the third workout, I went to 20 minutes and did, just did everything. I went to the gym, you know, lifetime fitness, and I just put light weight on everything. I just literally walked through the room and just moved stuff, which is normally how I train anyway. Um, and I was wrecked. I was wrecked for a week, but anyway, uh, it, it had a huge impact because it did change my blood flow. I got a lot of blood flow through that elbow and the elbow felt great uh, for, it still feels pretty good right now. So start basic. So with my athletes, we've been doing, since it snowed here already, we've been running in place, do high knees, which is really effective. Um, Cal does, uh, goes on bikes, because really it, it, it's not as specific as I want to work this muscle. It's a general thing because what we're looking for is that hormonal change and what they found was that when you occlude or restrict the blood flow it sends message to your brain that it needs a lot more work that's hard going over in that area and you release all kinds of human growth or growth hormone and it research has shown that it does have an impact on uh, insulin as well which is probably the most anabolic hormone there is 
And so do you get a great pump? You do. Um, it's just different. And because there's no oxygen getting the muscles, it forces you to use fast twitch muscle fibers, which is the soreness that you really feel. So if you've been like me and you've been lifting weights for forever and you move the bar slow, even though you put 60% on and you move it, it's 60% on, you still feel the difference. And so I think a lot of my soreness, which was a different feeling kind of soreness, was mostly fast twitch muscle fibers that were getting used for the first time in my biceps and triceps after doing years of you know, pushing on someone or curling a weight or extending weight or pressing a weight. That's cool. Wow. Yeah, that research has been around for decades. And yeah. I think people get away from it because the technology isn't there to make it useful. And it, yeah. But now with like the Be Strong stuff and there's some really expensive stuff out there. Yeah, the barrier for entry historically for, for blood flow restriction has been really, really high. Yeah, uh, the Be Strong stuff makes it moderately inexpensive. I'm not saying it's cheap, but it's a lot less than the $10,000 pieces of equipment that the Japanese use. Mm -hmm. Hence Katsu, which reminds me of the bad guys in Pacific Rim. 